Hi, my name is Kean, and welcome to today's Nerdbyte episode. We're going to look at New Relic's SAP integration. For this particular demo, we'll be taking data from an SAP PI system. With New Relic, there's no need to install monitoring agents on every PI system. We're able to use SAP's existing data sources through an enterprise connector, and we can then push to New Relic from our collection manager, so there's no need to install agents on every SAP server. The first thing we're going to look at is this SAP dashboard. This is more of a functional dashboard and pre-built, so there's no effort required to retrieve this information. You can see at the top, we have a list of different tabs, which we'll run through now. The first thing we are met with is this index tab, where I'll get a quick overview on the distribution of instances, as well as the host CPU usage. We also get a great look into how our iDocs are performing. IDOCs are the data structure being transferred from system to system, so it's really important that these are monitored. Now, traditionally, outbound and inbound would be separated, but New Relic consolidates this into one view while breaking it down into message type, partners, status, and we have a separate tab for the errors, which is able to break down the IDOC status and the message type that goes with that. RFCs, known as remote function calls, are the same in the sense as transferring data between two systems and then making a call to use a function. But with RFCs, you need to set up RFC destinations on the target. Here, we can monitor both transactional or TRFC and queued as QRFC in a single visual that's highlighting the errors, the trends, and the different statuses of each. We can also monitor the system, the instances, and the host, where we can get a look at the golden signals, such as the users logged in, response time, memory, and the word processor usage, as well as getting the error count and the logs to help troubleshoot further. With database monitoring, our integration is database agnostic and will take in general DB metrics no matter the vendor. This is looking at metrics like availability, response time, and space usage, so it's able to give us a clear picture of its overall health. Moving on to background jobs. The most important thing is getting the status to see if the job is either running correctly or failing, and also to see if the system has the capacity to carry out these jobs or schedule jobs in the future. This is particularly useful for an SAP basis as we're able to see how many background jobs are going in each system and where is the time being spent. We can then make decisions like maybe this needs a load balancer or the different scenarios like this. Lastly, in this transactions tab, this gives us a performance overview of the programs executed and more specifically the web requests. We also have these wait times, um, which is looking at the different processors and we can look at the number of calls or executions per program. So we're able to clearly see the worst performer in the system and this may point to something that needs a deeper analysis. With SAP, we have our own folder uh, with our own list of entities. And you can see that all of these entities are pretty much corresponding to the dashboards that we just went through. In each, we have our golden metrics, which is looking at the average response time, number of calls, average DB time, and the operation DB count. And then we have our distribu distributed tracing capability uh, which captures the full journey of every call being made through the entities. Distributed tracing is able to show a visual of each entity that's involved in the call, as well as giving a list. Now these traces at the bottom are assembled from the SAP performance database and shows the calls being made from start to finish. So typically this would be something on the SAP GUI to the instance dispatcher, um, that's what the process is, and then actually running the program. Then maybe the program itself might be making an external RFC or a database call, so it's able to capture the full journey of the transaction being executed. We have all the good things that come with distributed tracing, like performance stats and maybe the different attributes, which is helpful for the customer to reference when troubleshooting, 
or maybe referencing their SAP support ticket to give as much helpful information as possible to the ticket processor. Thank you for watching this episode of Nerdbytes and have a great day.